wouldn't say that I need it or that it's a must have in any shop. I have come to rely on it. And when it's unavailable, I certainly grieve for it. With or without the use of the machine, we must envision the part we want to create. The virtual representations that we struggle to create add intrinsically to the process. There are several elements to this work. Design and construction are the most significant. When building manually, we still need drawings to work from. The difference being that the 3D geometries only exist in our mind's eye. When we do the hard work to pull the geometry from the dimensional drawings into a 3D representation of the part, we are often surprised by the results. This secondary design manipulation of the 3D geometry adds yet another level to the subject matter. In manually building, we execute this work with edge in hand, in the moment. Virtual representations of these parts allow a small amount of foresight into these forms. It takes skill and time to develop a feeling for how these virtual bodies will work and feel in reality. I'm often asked, why do I remove the body blank and rough cut the excess with the bandsaw? The reason is simple. Please don't jump to the conclusion that CNC work is easier. It's not. Foundational knowledge of carving by hand will contribute to a significant advantage. The skills need to be mixed and fomented into a concoction ripe with abilities. These same skills have somehow become divided in a segmented world. Let's bring them back to each other and see what we can create. This project illustrates these differences in an interesting way. These shapes are not all that difficult to execute by hand. The mind that created these shapes could have easily pulled them from thought and into the tools, shaping them directly to the timber, seamlessly. The process used is far less free form, yet it has a unique elegance. Some of these geometries would have been much easier to generate manually. The tooling used on the CNC limits us more than you might think. The deep hole through the lower bout arm bevel area seemed like something I could form with my typical roughing methods and use a scallop toolpath to finish the cut, leaving only some light sanding to finish the part. In reality, I had to leave the scallop operation short to avoid collisions with the spindle and collet. To completely mill this shape would require some very specific tooling. This work is easily executed by hand using the tool marks as indicators. These dynamic contours held in their place through virtual bodies are captivating. Shapes like these are interesting to us in part due to their natural beauty and seamless flow. Rounded off and cut smooth by the forces of nature. 
their appeal is in this natural flow. It's a part of our existence to make forms from natural material that reflect Mother Nature's artistry. The act of forming the ergodynamic, smooth and interesting forms is not all that different in either method. Whether by hand with plane and chisel or surface mesh manipulation on a machine, the same design intent is followed. The benefit of non-destructive editing has become normal to us. Risk is not removed, just relocated to a secondary part of the process. There is no undo in the world of the chisel and no fingertip surface detection in the virtual space. We don't move backward all that often virtually, even though it's possible. Rather, we take a second attempt at a parametric opportunity. When we arrive at the destination in either method, we know it and lay down the tool.